Alright, that's a pretty good introduction. How you doing everybody? Good evening from Tokyo, Japan. And in this episode, we're just going to be doing Ask Me Anything. Basically, we've started the live stream. Welcome everybody. Um, in this episode, because it's raining outside, there's no midnight snack run or anything like that. We're basically going to be watching me deja vu on the screen to the right. Now, I've asked you to ask me questions. And by doing that, we're going to hopefully cover some subjects that... And by doing that, we're going to hopefully cover some subjects that might be interesting to you about traveling to Japan, things that you might um, either share that, you, share that you've, you've... Because you've traveled in Japan before or something that you're interested in um, coming here to visit, places to stay, what do you want to do here. Uh, I got that knowledge. It's all in here. I've been living here for 20 years, so it's kind of ask me anything day. Um, I did, well, while we're waiting for everybody to get online, um, right now we have 192. That's pretty good. Numbers are going up as the notifications go out. I have 192. That's pretty good. Numbers are going up as the notifications go out. I have right here um, Patreon page, and I've asked people, what questions do you have? So for the first couple of minutes, I'm going to answer some of the questions from our Patreon supporters. Um, uh, Estin Kiger writes in, what is the hardest thing about living in Japan? I would have to say, um, I don't know, I don't really think about that right now because I've been here for so long, I've been here for 20 years, I kind of just am so used to um, living here that I don't think of what's hard and what's not anymore. So I guess if I go back 20 years ago, the hardest thing was just getting used to the culture. When you come here, you are no longer in your home country. You have to assimilate to the culture that's here. You cannot expect this country to change its ways to do things your ways. And I think in the first six months, everything was pretty new. And then most foreigners that live in Japan have something called like a six months blues, I guess, where they just stop. Um, the honeymoon period is over, and now they really have to learn on how to be... Um, citizens or residents of Japan. So that was pretty hard for, for me about living in Japan. Um, recycling is also hard. You have to know what to recycle to. And I'm going to be doing an episode on that really soon. That's a great question. Uh, Shereel, a.k.a. Meme Ranglot, what is your sweetest memory of, from living in Japan thus far, apart from Kanai? And what's your most sour memory? Wow. This is like asking a guy you know, 20 years of history to uh, <laughs> reminisce. I don't know. The sweetest memory probably would be um, completing the first hitchhiking trip and uh, making it to the other side. And that's when I knew, you know, after that, that I wanted to stay here. That was way back in 2003. That was a pretty sweet memory. Pretty sweet memory. Um, starting my own business in Japan was a pretty sweet memory. And... Um, yeah, seeing the success of this channel has been pretty sweet. And the Sour Memories also is this channel in some ways because um, it's really hard to manage a YouTube channel. This, it goes like this. There's sometimes you're like, yeah, look at this. We're, we're going up, we're going up. And then all of a sudden um, the algorithm kicks in and things don't work out the way it is. It's like, what did I do wrong? And you start to self-examine it. The first couple of years of YouTubing was pretty challenging uh, to, to grow the channel. But I don't know, Sour Memories? I don't really have any. I kind of look at the bright side even in the worst worst of situations because there's not much I can do about it. If, if something is really bad, I kind of go the opposite way to try to balance it out. And if something is too good, I'll live in the moment and then my expectations come in and sort of balance that out a little bit because you can't be happy all the time, but it's those times when you're not happy that make being happy more worthwhile. So I, I don't know, that's a good question, but I, I don't I can't recall any sour moments. Um, Daniel, Daniel Audi writes in, how does a normal home meal and cooking table set look like in Japan? I've showed that in um, a couple of videos, but for typical Japanese, they usually put the, they have lots of different bowls on the table, and then there's, everybody gets their plate or a little plate, and you just take the way, that, take what you want. So usually the chopsticks are set right in the front of you, and then you'll have a little thing, little saucer for soy sauce, and then you'll have, uh, it, it, it also depends on what, you know, your your um, what you're cooking. Um, when I cook, I typically don't cook traditional Japanese food like that. I'll make like donburi or everything is on rice kind of a deal. And um, yeah, Japanese families make more. The mother will cook several different things. Sometimes the father. The father should be cooking a little bit. And then the, the, they will pick 
uh, a little bit from each one, and then there'll be a rice bowl as well. Sometimes the rice bowl is what you will put stuff on, at least that's what I do. Um, that's a good question, and maybe I'll, I'll see if I can do a homestay and have like a, a home-cooked meal just to give a look inside. That's a pretty cool topic. Danny writes in, Hey Danny, despite the fact that you did not speak Japanese, was it difficult to find and rent an apartment? Find an insurance company bank? No. When you come to Japan, this is important for all of you who are thinking about getting a job here or who will be moving here. The vast majority of you, you need to have a visa. There's a select few countries that can get by on work holiday visas and you are the blessed, so, as, so to speak. I was not one of them. So in order to come to Japan, you need to have the proper visa, first of all. You cannot just come here and look for a job and get one. You have, if you find a job, you're going to have to leave the country. If you get a job and get hired by a Japanese co company, you will be taken care of. In fact, they almost baby you. My, the company I came into um, 20 years ago was uh, an English school. They did my taxes for me. They made sure that my, my rent was paid through my salary. They kind of did everything for me. They took care of the health insurance. I didn't even have to think about this stuff. And the companies have these kinds of services that make your life so easy. It's almost too easy. And then, and then I left that company and started my own business. And then it just became really, really hard. And I had to learn the system. And then after you learn the system, it's not too bad. Japan is set up, and this is such a great question, Danny. Japan is set up in a way that once you you learn the process, it, it's just so easy. You don't need lawyers to do your taxes or accountants. You can pretty much do all of that yourself. I think that in that way, um, living in Japan is so easy, but um, if you're a freelancer or you're doing it yourself or you have a, your own company, it's a little bit more complicated. And uh, I own my own business here and uh, it's registered in Japan and it's pretty complicated sometimes. But now after so many years in, it's, it's, it's a lot easier. But it's still uh, very important because I have to get everything right. So tax season in February, I do not look that happy. Um, Jawata Ta uh, Takashi, in Hawaii we eat something called uh, opihi. It's the limpest uh, that people die from. Yeah, I've heard about this. Um, I've never had it in Japan, but I, I, I believe they eat it. But I've never had it in Japan. Um, the most notorious food is fugu, but that's not that dangerous anymore yeah I don't know anybody who's died of fugu and if I did um, they'd be dead so I, I don't know but uh, opihi I, I don't know too much about it uh, Joata, but um, thanks for bringing that up um, it's something that I look into because deadly foods of Japan would be a pretty cool topic for a, or a title for an episode in the future uh, Denny writes in hi John which is better place to see autumn leaves for tomorrow tomorrow so Denny's already in Japan Kyoto or Kamakura you know, I don't know. I, Kyoto is so crowded right now. It rained today, so I don't think the, the weather's going to be very good. It's supposed to, it's supposed to rain um, the next couple of days. But I would say Kamakura, maybe, because Kyoto is beautiful, but it's so crowded. It's like waiting in line at Disney. You just, you, you, it, you, it's like you're not going anywhere for hours. And it's not, I don't know. I was there in Kyoto for for the autumn colors the for fall um, a couple of times usually the third week in November and it's really just too crowded and it's more stressful than relaxing but um, you know everybody has a different different take on it I, I would recommend Kamakura or Nikko would even be better Nikko is beautiful um, Haz Rizal hi John Haz here hey Haz ha is the JIT program the best way to get into Japan to learn Japanese there's no best way if it depends on how old you are. If the best way would be like work holiday visa if you can find a job. There's no best way. A JET program is one way. And the JET program has some, some great positives and some negatives and some pros and cons too. Like you cannot pick where you're going to be a JET. You could be stuck in the middle of nowhere. And the school that you go to, you might not know what situation you're walking into. The last teacher could have been a disaster and the teachers just hate whoever comes in. It's just sort of... Um, really, it's tough if you're a jet. You could be walking into a fantastic situation or a really tough one. You could be living in the city or you could be living in the countryside. You could be living in a place with no other foreigners or a place there's too many foreigners or there's disgruntled foreigners or there's foreigners that only want Japanese friends. There's so many different things that make life really hard. So, um, yeah, the thing about the jet program is you can't, you can't really um, control. Rose hip tea, everybody. 
This is from my patrons. I, I, I really appreciate what you guys do for me supporting the show. I have to plug Patreon. Um, right now, if you join in the next um, two weeks, you'll get this Ogasawara postcard that I send out to people um, if you're part of the postcard club or the daimyos. So I appreciate the support, guys. Let's go now. We have 460 people online right now. So on, Andrea On writes in here. Hey, Andrea. Uh, John, we recently had a close family member pass on their uh, pass, and on their last night, we stayed up with them while they faded. Um, we played your videos to lift our spirits. Your positivity energy brought us all comfort. Wanted you to know that. Andrea, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I'm conflicted with this because I, I'm, I'm really sorry that you, first of all, uh, lost somebody close to you, but I'm also really happy that in a small way that the videos could help. Um, yeah, I get, a lot of people ask me about that. My, my whole philosophy to life is pretty simple. Um, just if you have a choice on whether or not to be positive or not, it's pretty simple what the choice is and you have to kind of change the way you think a little bit, meaning that things are never really as bad. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life. I've traveled a lot. Um, I think I've been to 70, over 70 countries. Um, I can't name them. But I can tell you that I've seen people that were in really, really tough situations, people that will never be able to visit Japan, people that will never be able to live the way that I have or have the same kinds of experiences. And it makes me reflect on my own life. Um, the, the first world problems that I have um, is not something that I really that really bothers me too much. I just move on and yeah, being it's I don't know. Just everybody feels different inside. But I, I'm just really appreciative that that um, you took you took away it's uh, something positive from them and and uh, that makes me very happy to hear. So thank you, thanks for that. Now I've got this feed here. It's going by pretty fast. Um, we have a new moderator in town. It's Ramsalint. He's been. Um, Tim has been with us for a while, and he does a really good job. Um, and he wasn't a moderator, so we've elevated him to the rank of moderator. And I think um, it's well-deserved. Our other moderators, Nosa Broad and Jim, also approved. So we've got a very happy family. Um, I'm looking for people in Europe that are um, would like to take on the task, Europe and other time zones. Um, I, it would be nice to have someone who is not a dude as well to be a moderator. Um, just to keep things balanced a little bit, but I'm cool, you know, it's, it, it, it's always the best person uh, in there. Just because I think sometimes I go on at, at different time zones and to have more moderators in different time zones keeps the stream friendly for everybody. All right, let's see what we got here, questions. Um, tourist, tourist, hey from Slovenia. Whoa, I, you know what, in 19, uh, what year was it, 1998, I hitchhiked from Zagreb to Ljubljana with two Croatian girls. And we spent a couple of nights in Ljubljana where there's these three beautiful bridges. I don't remember too much about it, but Ljubljana in Slovenia is one of the most beautiful um, cities when it snows. Oh, man, we had such a wonderful time. And I didn't, that was the first time I ever hitchhiked, too, from Zagreb in Croatia to Slovenia. But um, why is the, there no episode on Mount Fuji? And that's such a really good question. Um, Mount Fuji has been done by so many different YouTubers, I don't really think I could do a better job. That's number one. Number two, I've already climbed Mount Fuji twice, and I really don't want to climb it again, but I will do it for you. I will climb it for you, but I have to come up with something that's different than what everybody else has done. You cannot just keep making the same episodes over and over again. I don't really do travel videos, tourist videos. Um, I try to look for a story. Um, the last one in Kyoto was more of a, um, a travel video. I do, I do do them, but that's not really what makes the channel um, popular. It's mostly about um, the story. At least that's what I hope you take away from it. Um, so that's why there's no Mount Fuji episode, but there might be. There might be. Um, moving along, Nev nobody ever goes fishing in Japan and streaming it. Robert, that might be because nothing... It, there might not be a signal out in the middle of the countryside. Sometimes there's not a really good 4G signal for streaming. And the second one is, I think there's a couple of people who do have really good YouTube channels um, on Lake Biwa, Biwako, that have um, fishing channels. Um, they're quite popular, and I would love to collaborate with one of them and do some fishing. So maybe we will. I, you know, maybe we will. 
I don't know how exciting it will be. I, I, I can't promise we'll catch something right away. <laughs> but I, you'd have to watch for a while. You'd have to watch for a while. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, will you be going on a sleeper train again? Darren writes in. Darren, there's a, lo a new luxury train that opened up, and I'd love to have access to ride that one and do a video on it, but right now there's no other sleeper trains that I know about other than the Sunrise Izumo and the Sunrise Seto. The Sunrise Izumo and the Sunrise Seto. The Sunrise train splits at Okayama. One train will keep going to uh, Shikoku, and the other train will split and go towards Izumo and Yonago. And uh, I think a lot of people have gone towards that, that way. Not a lot of people have gone the Shikoku way. So maybe um, the Sunrise Seto, I will go towards the Seto uh, side. And that might be something that I do as well. It's a good suggestion. I really love the night train. It was a pretty cool experience. Um, is the car scene still big in Japan? Um, this is Sinthasen. The car scene is pretty big. In fact, everybody that's watching this right now, I'd say maybe 90% of you... Um, really are, if, if you came to Japan, would probably ride the rails. And Japan has the best, well, one of the best train lines in the world. I mean, it's just, it's just extraordinarily efficient. Um, and with the Shinkansen, it's super fast. But um, Japan is not connected everywhere with train. And Japan makes, has a, maybe just as many car makers as, as the USA and Germany, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of car makers in Japan, major car makers, that big sales. So Japan is a big car country as well. The population isn't as big as the United States or Europe, but it's still it's still pretty big. It's what do we got? 130 million people, decreasing, but there's a lot of people who who um, buy cars, and there's a big car culture, and that's something. Now that I have a license, I'm going to be getting into more and more. Um, car culture is big here. We're just just scratching the surface. I'm not talking about drift and stuff like this, things from movies. I'm talking about like there's a subculture, many subcultures in cars that no you don't even know about that I'd love to cover. I got look guys, I got no end to ideas for this show. I will never run out of ideas. I just run out of time and resources. That's why um, you know in 2019 I'm hoping that I can grow the channel by by bringing in some people living in Japan to help me out. Um, so I will be hiring, <laughs> I will be hiring, but it'll be from people who are already living in Japan because, um, that just makes more sense with the flow of things. It's harder, you know, if you're not here, sort of. Actually, Toyota is the biggest car maker now in the world. Wow, that's pretty big because it's the biggest in the world. Let's see here, the next question. Oh, here's one, Lannister. Um, I will be a month in Japan alone. I have never been before. What cities do you recommend? Lannister writes this in. Lannister, that's a good question. First of all, traveling alone in Japan is a little can, can be fun, but I think it's a little bit tougher because Japanese are shy and it's hard to make friends right away. Sometimes you can feel alone. I'm just saying from experience because I've been out there a lot. So no, being able to know a little bit of Japanese will be very valuable to you. But um, traveling alone is still a good experience because it's the big, biggest chance to meet people. Um, what cities do you recommend? I'd recommend, you know, I always tell people, if you have to choose between Tokyo and, and Osaka, this is an important question. I, and I'm surprised nobody asked this one. Maybe you did. I missed it. Tokyo or Osaka? I'm always going to say Osaka. Osaka, Kansai Airport is... Um, it's pre it's pretty convenient. Usually the the deals might be better there. I don't know, but Kansai has so much stuff to see, and you can do day trip to Tokyo, and and just you can do like a week or two weeks in just Kansai alone. It has Nara. It has Osaka. It has Kobe. It has uh, Arima Onsen. It has Himeji. It has Kyoto. It has uh, Lake Biwa. It has Mie. It has the Ninja Castle. It has. Um, Wow, Matsuzaka Wagyu. It also has Omi Wagyu in Shiga Prefecture. It has not too far away is Kanazawa. It's it's kind of kind of in that area from Kyoto. It's a, it's a couple of hours to Kanazawa. Yeah, in this whole area, there's just so much to do in the Kansai area. I think I think Kanazawa is the Hokuriku area. I I could be wrong, but there, there's just so much to do there. And in Kanto, that the area of Tokyo, you might not even know. Like there's Kansai and then there's Kanto. Tokyo is part of the Kanto area. And 
there's a lot of stuff to do here too, but just just Kansai is stacked, you know. And, and so if you, I would recommend just to fly into Osaka and then do a day trip to Tokyo or something or do a couple of days here and then just stay in Kansai. I always recommend that. My friends in Tokyo aren't going to be happy by that. The second thing is that there's too many YouTubers in Tokyo, by the way. Everybody is doing YouTube videos here. There's Tokyo is a, is a big part of Japan, but it's not... I wouldn't even consider Tokyo Japan. I think it's like Japan is... is there's Tokyo and then there's the rest of the country. Japan is just so unique in its in its own sense that um, in its own right that what's out there in the countryside is it's just such a different experience to me. Um, that's like saying with the United States there's New York and then there's like everything else I think. Uh, Tokyo is kind of the same way. Tokyo is kind of the same way. Um, well, these are some great questions here. Love from India. I'll be in Mumbai on um, December. December 11th to December 16th. Yeah, I'll be in Mumbai December 11th. And look on Facebook for a meetup if you, if you have a chance to meet up. I'm actually looking for people to help me out with assisting with the meetup because I don't know um, places to meet up in Mumbai so well. So if you're watching from India, uh, send me a message um, via Instagram or on, on Facebook is, is also good. Um, let's see here. Would you do a video at Wakayama, stay in a temple? Um, hey, this is Wang Yao Tan. Yeah, you know what? Um, I've, I've been thinking about that. In fact, there's an American guy who runs one of the temples, and he got so angry at some of the criticism. This is a big story in Japan last month. There's an American monk, Buddhist monk, living at one of the temples, and uh, he, I guess the temple he worked in was criticized by a foreign foreigner who complained about the food or something. I forget. And he just went off on that um, review like, using the F word for a monk. Um, and then he was criticized in the Japanese media, but the Japanese media let him off easy because he, he was pretty much right. And I guess he was just frustrated at all of the, that's not monkly, that's not monkly of him to do, but um, Wakayama is a place where a lot of people do that. And there's, I'm also go gonna be going to Oita. Oita city is also a place that ha that's famous for having um, um, stays at temple or at least the cuisine. Uh, Buddhist cuisine is very famous there, so we're gonna, um, I forget the name of it, there's a, a specific name for it, but, um, thanks for asking that question. Um, you have already documented the, uh, Kishiwara, yeah, Let's see here, Nagoya, Toyota Museum, Toyota, Toyota, Toyota Museum is one of the attractions, sure, and yes, monks are still human, um, we cannot forget that, although they're, to be peaceful people, you're still human and feel and feel a wide range of emotions that you must sometimes, you know, project. Uh, let's see here. Fajri, can you make a video about green tea culture in Japan? Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing this. Visit a Nihon Daira in Shizuoka and can I help you because I live in Shizuoka? Um, send me a message. Send me a message via um, Instagram or Facebook or tag me. The best way to get in touch with me is to tag me in a photo. <laughs> I always go and check those. But yeah, let, let me know and get in touch with me because I'm, I'm um, in the spring thinking. That's when um, cherry, sorry, the tea, tea season um, and the, the green tea foods and desserts start coming out in the spring. And that's a good time to start to um, make an episode like that when it's warmer. Now we're already in fall, so autumn. So winter topics are coming up. Uh, GH from Norway. Hey, any tips on what to do as a couple in Tokyo during Christmas and New Year's Eve? It will be our fourth trip to Tokyo, but the first winter trip. Wow. So GH, um, that's a great question. For couples, I'm going to tell you to go. I don't. Yeah, I, I kind of have have talked about this a little bit. Not not so much in particular, like with couples. But this is the only in Japan um, um, YouTube page, the main channel. And I made a video in January. This video, there's two of them. Actually, there's, th there's three of them. This one's called Japanese Onsen Bath Experience. This is called Japanese Inn and Kaiseki Cuisine, the Ryokan Stay. These two are kind of together, and I would recommend watching both of them. And then there, there's one in 360. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you stay at an onsen. Uh, preferably in Tohoku, but anywhere that has snow. There's just something magical about being naked in the snow, outside, in a bath, 
it's cool. And um, it's sort of, and there's also konyoku baths where uh, couples can be in them. Usually the women will be um, in a robe and it, depending on the dude, you just hold a towel there and hope it doesn't fall or maybe you, it does fall. But people, do, you know, even the opposite sect don't, don't really mind about the nudity. If you do something, you know, bad, then you're just going to get kicked out or arrested. But nobody, nobody does that. Um, let's see here. The one, I have one image of, of this I want to show you. This came from a video, and a lot of people ask me where this is. It's called Japanese Public Bathing Exposed the Naked Truth. And in this episode, um, in this episode, this is the one I go to the snow onsen. And people have been asking me about it. You can find it right here. All right. It's one of the most romantic experiences. This was in, this was years ago. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, that, that's me waking up, opening the door, just watching the snow fall outside. You can see the snow and, and uh, the water is warm. That's Kanai. Just to say that's Kanai. It's like years ago. And then you get, wake up. This is dinner time. You're eating Japanese um, kaiseki ryori, which is really good. Um, see here. They, I showed that. While you're eating, they'll set up the futon for you. The service is impeccable at Japanese ryokan, or traditional Japanese inns. It's just, it's the best. They're not cheap, but if you're going for a romantic trip, spend two nights and then go to another one and spend two more nights. That's what I would do. Um, let's see here. At night, it's really, you can go at night if you stay there. Look at the snow around me. It's just beautiful. This is in the morning. You have access, like I go at five in the morning when there's nobody around, and then if it's co-ed, like this one is Takaragawa Onsen, I, I recommend this one in Gunma. You can go in with your girlfriend or your wife, and if you're a woman, with your husband or your boyfriend. And uh, soak together. Let's see if I can get that image. Yeah, just just, just soak this up. It's beautiful. That's me down there. Naked in a hot bath in a snowstorm. That's me down there. <laughs> As people ask me why I used yodeling music. I just thought it seemed really fun. What's wrong with yodeling, you know? Nothing wrong with yodeling. Um, Miranda Kogan. How you doing? Hi, John. Would you ever come to Perth? Yes, I totally would. If so, what would you document? Our culture or food? Um, Miranda, I would go to Perth just to have fun. And to be honest with you, um, I don't know what I would document. Do I need to document anything? Because it, it's not really anything like only in Japan worthy. I don't know. But that's one of the places that in the world I have not been to. I've been all over Australia. I've been to Darwin, I've been to Adelaide, I've been everywhere in between on that side. Um, I haven't been to Tasmania, but Perth, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to go there. Um, I don't know what I would document. Maybe the food and the culture and everything. Only in Perth, that would be a series that could be. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Naked in a hot bath in the snow. Francis, it is awesome. You have the child enthusiasm and curiosity, <laughs> which is rare, rare and beautiful. Now, thank you. I don't know. I never really... I, look, I used to teach kids. I think some of you know this. I used to teach kids that were um, between the ages of zero, which is weird. They were We called them prenatal stimulation classes, where the mother would take classes and we would teach them how to sing in English and, and kind of teach their kids. And it was, an, it was something, it was good because it was something for the mothers to do um, with other mothers because mothers from others' brothers. I don't know what I'm talking about. Jun Zeng writes in, John, love your videos. I've been to Japan five times in the last two years. Whoa. And it all started with watching your videos initially. Whoa, Jun. So basically what you're saying is you, um, you, you, over the last five years, you've been watching the show and you came two times. It's so five years. That's a long time I've been making this show. Let me sink, let that sink in for a little bit. Wow. 
Thank you. I, I got a question for you, Jun. What what was your favorite episode? This follow up question, and I, maybe you'll be able to catch it in the live stream. You don't have to do another super chat. But what was your favorite episode? The number five over the over the two years. Oh wow, five times over two years. June, what was your favorite episode? Which one was most useful for you? And what, on in your five trips, what did you see that I didn't cover in Only in Japan that, that you think would make a good episode? I think June has a lot of, um, could be doing this live stream instead of me. <laughs> five times. That's that's a lot. I mean, I'd love to hear from June. Thank you. I'm, I am watching here. Um, Toby O, anyone with the name Toby gets a special shout out. Any tip for disabled travelers traveling to Japan? Um, let's see here, Toby. That's a great question. I, I I've been I've been getting this asked a lot, and I totally want to um, make an episode about getting around in a wheelchair. And I have some friends that I, I in fact I know somebody who makes wheelchairs. So I'm gonna see if we can collaborate with the wheelchair maker, and maybe I try for a day to get around. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, and this would. And by doing it, and I always thought by doing it, you, you will learn what are the weaknesses and the strengths and what are the good points and the bad points about the city of Tokyo getting around in a wheelchair. So um, that's that's an episode I think is in the works. So thanks, Toby, Toby, for that. Hey, I see uh, professors in the house. How you doing? Long time to see professor. Hey, John, it's been a month since I was in Japan. Um, it was amazing. Spring 2020 will be my next trip. Um, where should I go next? Uh, up towards Aomori and Sapporo, or down to Fukuoka and Kagoshima. Whoa, that's a good one. That's a good one. So you're coming, I guess you're saying spring 2020, uh, Professor. Um, you could do both. It's crazy. You could do both. And you know why? Because there's so many low-budget airlines popping up. You could just do whatever you want and um, just take a flight and then go down to Kagoshima or something. That, I mean, right now you can go Tokyo to Kagoshima for $35 on um, on a Jetstar or one of the other low-cost low area carriers, Jetstar or Skymark. It's like $35. Like, it, I don't know why people get a train pass because it's just so cheap to fly the low-budget carriers. Um, wow. You know what, Professor? Let me, let me think about that. I'm going to have to say, though, in the spring, I really love, I really love Tohoku and I love Aomori. Um, I would say up towards Aomori. It just depends if it's March. I would go down to Kyushu. If it's April, I would go up to Aomori because Hirosaki was just beautiful for the cherry blossoms. Um, and Hakodate was is an amazing. If you haven't been to Hakodate, Professor, trust me, Hakodate, big big recommendation. Um, the seafood is beautiful. It's so good. It's cheap. Um, the view, the night view is so impressive. The people are friendly and it's relaxed and, uh, the city is just so well planned. It's, it's, it's a wonderful city. Oh, I see Jun, Jun left a comment here. Uh, Heinrich Weber, Yonago and Mount Dyson were great. Awesome. Heinrich, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that. I highly recommend Mount Dyson and Yonago. I got a lot to say. I'm also looking forward to going to visit um, Munich. In um, I'll be in Munich December 17th. I'm th planning to do a meetup in Marienplatz in Munich, and Kanai will be with me. Yeah, Let's see here. I, I saw Jun, uh, Jun. Jun writes in Jun from uh, before. Uh, my favorites were all the bento box unboxings. Ah, yeah, they were my favorite too because I got to eat them. But when I saw the the Peach Fanta live stream, it made my mission to find it even when I was there. I found out they sell it at a time at the Sega arcades. Yeah, that that Peach Fanta was the best Fanta that I've ever had. And I don't like soda, but that was one that I could actually drink and be satisfied. And, and Fanta is pretty good here. I guess because they use real fruit juice or something, but uh, I'm always, that, that was, I actually bought that more than once. Soda, the sodas, I don't drink too much, but. That Fanta was good. The peach one. I'm glad I did that episode. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Um, let's see here. Alex, can you go camping with a tent? Are forests public? Yes, you can go camping with a tent. Um, I recommend camping grounds. There's some sites in English. Forests are not all public. Um, you can, But there's an unwritten rule that if you put your tent up at night, if it's public, um, just get up by sunrise and you'll be fine. 
it's, it's like an unwritten rule. I, I usually camped in parks, um, like a homeless person, <laughs> because there's because there's also um, public baths, centos all over the place, so you can take a bath and be clean and just stay in a tent in the park. That I don't recommend for everybody, but you want to put up your tent late and then get out early um, because it's that's a polite thing to do and keep the keep the noise down. It's a great question. Um, I saw Ashley had a question. I'm, it's it's hard to see because I'm losing losing the feed. There's a lot of questions coming in. Ashley Andre writes in, Hey John, I'm such a big fan. Watching your videos for two years. And my fave is the one with manga ca manga cafe at Akihabara. See, when I speak English, they go manga. And when I speak Japanese, they go manga. And it's just hard. Manga, anime, anime. Uh, manga cafe in Akihabara, right. Um, it's one of my destinations this year. You should definitely check it out. Manga cafe is a pretty fun... Um, especially if you can read Japanese, it's hard to find English manga at manga cafes, but it's a pretty neat experience. Um, usually they're places, if you if you like miss your last train, it's a place you can crash, because the services are pretty simple, but it's kind of a neat experience in Japan, because they're very, very, it's, it's just part of the culture, the modern culture, to crash at places like that. So, one night is, is enough. I don't think I can do more than one night. Maybe I could do, maybe two, maybe two. Um, let's see here, John, have you visited uh, Yonaguni's underwater pyramid? No, I haven't visited that yet. Um, d did you sleep well as a homeless man? <laughs> um, yes, I did. Uh, it was in Kanazawa. I, I, I think I told this story in a live stream. You guys can go back and check it out. I was in Kanazawa and uh, when I was hitchhiking, and by the way, I, I have a message about the, the DVD. I'm going to be selling the DVDs to everybody else next year, but um, I, I'll be talking to everybody else who, who's part of the DVD project real soon. The, um, in Kanazawa on that trip, I set up my tent a, in the park, and an, a real homeless lady set up her tent next to mine. This, this is, tells you a lot about Japan, okay? There are homeless people in Japan. Usually they're, they're in tough situations where they cannot rely on their family. And it's usually the family's responsibility to take care of people that are not in good shape. The family helps, or the community will help. But she, I, I don't know what her story was. Um, friends have told me that her situation could be that she lost, she lo didn't have any other family, and then she was divorced, or she lost good favor with her husband's family or something, and then she's just on her own with no money. But she had a bicycle, on the back was a bunch of cardboard, it was just, it was beautifully, like, very neatly placed. She looked really clean, but in her late 50s, and she just started to put up cardboard and asleep on a bench. And I remember looking out there, and I go, oh my, is she going to be okay? It wasn't that cold, It was, but it was, um, um, I was following the cherry blossoms, but it wasn't warm either. So in the morning, early, early in the morning, I got up early, that's what I do when, I t when I'm camping, and she was putting her boxes away, so I talked to her for a little bit. Um... She couldn't speak English, she said, but that was okay because I could speak Japanese. But I had some, I had some bananas, so I gave her uh, a couple of the bananas. Wait a second, no, 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 it was the other way around. No, I, I had mikans. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, so I gave her two mikans, and she gave me a banana. And we, and for like, I guess it was like ten, fifteen minutes. I sat there just eating my other mikans, and and I ate her banana, and she sat there smiling, eating the mikans that I gave her. And then that was it. She got on her bike and left. And I never saw her again, but she was staying in a park in Kanazawa, not far from the station. And uh, um, I, I didn't, it, when you don't know people, you don't ask personal questions in Japan. It seems like a bit much. So I didn't want to ask her about a situation, but she, she's very, she was a very nice woman. And that left a pretty um, unique impression on me because I'd never, you know, been in, like to see a, a female homeless woman who was still quite, I, I guess 50, she was still quite young and, and seemed mentally okay. I didn't know what, like, what, what can I do to help her? But I was going to leave town. There's not really much you can do. You don't want to offer money because that's also insulting. Um, it's just a hard situation. I'm sorry to, to, to ramble on about that. It's just one of these uh, um, things. Yeah, Jim, I'll give, you, I'll give everybody an update really soon. Um, I also have some other news that I, I can't tell you right now. Um, something that is not so happy. That has nothing to do with that project, but there's there's something else. But I can't tell you at this moment yet. Um, Betty Boop writes in, Are there charities for homeless or soup kitchens? Not too many. Um, I saw many in Japan last month, and winter 
would be difficult. Yeah, you know, there's really not that much support. I, I don't know too much about it other than what Greg from Life Where I'm From made in the most thorough video series on it. Um, you know, in Japan, families take care of the elderly. Families will take care of people that are sick. Family takes, takes care of their family. And Japanese nuclear families often have the grandparents living with the parents. And uh, that's just part of the way Japan is structured. So um, when the system falls or fails, I, this is just coming from my opinion now. I don't know for sure, but it just people can get left out of the system. And um, Japan is such a polite society in the sense that they keep to themselves and not to get involved in other people's businesses. It's, it's a good thing and it's also sometimes a bad thing. Uh, maybe we can ask more questions. I don't know. I, it's not a topic that I know too much about. I, I have to be honest with you. But it's one that I, I've experienced, um, you know, camping in parks in the city. Um, and it's still safe. I plan on marrying in Japan next year. Whoa! This is from Jessica Orr. Hey, uh, are there mentionable privileges gained after marriage in Japan? Will I be able to purchase a home? So Jessica asks a really good question. Are you, I don't know if you're Japanese or you're, or you're marrying somebody who is Japanese, Jessica. Um, but you will get a spouse visa, and that doesn't really give you... It doesn't give you that many rights other than you can pretty much do anything you want work-wise. You don't have to work in a specific field anymore. Um, you're a spouse, um, but you're sort of... It's, it's like you're being sponsored by your husband's family or your wife's family. And, um, yeah, you know, you, you have some rights, but you can't vote. You're not a citizen. Um, you're not, you don't have a green card. You have a work permit. It's a little bit different. Um, if you become a permanent resident, which is age you can, then you have a little bit more rights. But still, um, un unless you're a citizen, you don't have too many rights. Can you buy property? That's a great question. Uh, and I think, you know, wow. I think you'll need to have a, a Japanese co-signer. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's it's not as easy as you think. In fact, even for Japanese to buy land, it's not that easy either. There's usually comes with all these um, all these strings attached and lots. It's just these things like land purchase in Japan. It's such an old country. There's so much, so many little rules, but you can. I believe you can. It's a good question. How much do you earn from YouTube? I'm not going to tell you that. Um, some people might guess at it, but you don't ask how much. You don't really answer questions about how much you make because, um, and and you don't ask other people either because I don't see anybody. Um, I'm not everybody. Everybody sees. And I'm going to answer this in in an honest way. It, it's because it's a fair question. I think you should ask it. You can't ask it. I wouldn't ask it, but people ask it. Um, I don't judge people by how much they make or how little they make. I don't judge people by what they look like. I don't judge people. I don't ask questions like, what's your background? I don't ask questions like, what's your ethnicity? I don't ask questions like, what's your religion? Because I don't care. Um, people can bring it up and then maybe I'll ask questions. But for me, um, I make, I can do this full time and that should be enough for you. Um, I can do this full time, but I'm, I'm very far from rich. And despite what, people may think I do I do enough to be able to do this full time that's all I can answer I think um, I don't make as much on the main channel as you think I do and I don't make as much on the go channel as you think I do but it's enough to it does pretty good compared to a lot of other people it's a hard question I don't know any other way to, to answer it but when you do say that then people start to see you in a different way and compare you like, oh, you must be this and you must do this. And I don't ask. Do you still do TV work? Mark asked me. Yeah, actually, Mark, actually, um, we sh I should be checking. Um, and uh, that's another thing I wanted to go into. I'm going to be in a show called Journeys in Japan, which I've done. Um, I think this is my fifth one. I love this show. Because they make it so beautiful. Um, maybe it's the next one. I don't know. No, it's not. Um, I'll be doing one. It's either going to be this week or next week. And I did it in Yonago, which is right here in this area of Japan. Journeys in Japan is one of the most beautiful shows. It's an NHK show. And um, there's not as many reporters. 
and there's no host or anything like this, no studio shoots. It's just you go out there and you f and you do the story. And I've done five. This is the fifth one that I did, and um, it's always an honor to be able to go out and do do that. I mean, in fact, I think there's a, there's still a couple of them available. This one. Which other ones have I done? I've done a couple of them in Yonago. Most of them have been in Yonago. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh, this one played. This one's called um, Miho no Seki. John Dobb. It's kind of small. But uh, that, was a good, that was a fun one. I did one in, um, in Ibaragi Prefecture. I did one in... Um, wow. I was I get asked a lot, but I cannot do as much TV work anymore because, as I said, like my my goal or my priority is only in Japan now, and uh, I I we have 522 patrons right now. Um, people are always coming and going, and I I kind of like having a community of people on Patreon where I can kind kind of use as sounding boards and communicate with because they all seem to have a really great love for Japan and and the show. So for me, it's almost like a full-time job um, to manage that and the channels, um, but it's a lot of fun, you know. I do I do TV work. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be doing a, a Tokyo FM radio interview um, on uh, about Japan and and only in Japan. When is that? It's at the end of this month. Uh, so I'm going to go to Tokyo FM and I have to do the interview in Japanese live. And I've done that before. Um, I used to do TV shows. You guys, actually, you you guys want to see a TV? Here, while, while we're talking and I'm taking questions, I'll see if I can find um, the... Uh... So I used to do this, this live TV show, and I don't want to talk about myself too much. Okay, maybe a little. One of the most um, things that made me the nervous, nerviest... The most nervous was um, doing a Japanese news program live in the morning that millions of people watch here in Japanese. I was freaking out. But you cannot not you cannot say no to that experience. You have to do it. Um, and they've called me a couple of times to do interviews or to be on the show, but I just I haven't been able to do it because why is it coming up? I'm telling you, Apple is really not good sometimes I don't like Apple products okay here we go I'm gonna show you a clip all right maybe I'm speaking Japanese I don't remember oh, that's, that's only a part of a clip oh, here we go I don't know if I should show you this. This is embarrassing. ですよ。はい。ショーカゴもやっぱいいですか。うん、いいですよ。なんかシージャパンじゃなくてドゥジャパンがいいですね。見るだ、ジャパンじゃなくてドゥ。そうそうそう。実際行うコードをはい、体験
did you did a video with Mark Weens? Not yet. Do you still s stay in touch with him and Ying? I haven't done anything with Mark. Um, I I think we did communicate like years ago, um, when the channels were a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, and I I've been in touch with. I I think I I got a message from Food Ranger years ago. I I one one of the other ones. I know that they watch the series. And I watch theirs too because they do a lot of stuff. That'd be fun if they ever come to Japan. All they need to do is let me know. Um, Mike Chen um, from Strictly Dumplings. Um, we did an episode together, and um, I don't know. Maybe I can show you the thumbnail for that. Um, that's going to be coming out soon, and that was a lot of fun because let's see if I can, this is what I think is going to be the thumbnail. That's Mike, and this is this is me right there. See right in the middle there. That's like probably what the thumbnail is gonna look like. Um, we ate maguro, um, and he his was eating sushi for the first time at my favorite place, which is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, hopefully, you know this comes out this comes out soon. And uh, I like collaborations, but I don't do too many of them. I just wanted to do it because you know the channel is gonna hit one million subscribers soon, and I'm so thankful for that. And one of the one of the things that people request or they like to see is then when when people work with other youtubers that they like and it's kind of neat to um for the viewers to do that it's not that great for the channel i don't know but i like i like um being friends with other youtubers but uh, it's, it's neat for you i think and that's why i did um the collaboration with mike and i did one with scotty and i did one with um what's inside because they're like just nice people, you know. I love that those guys, Mark and uh, Dan and Lincoln, are just, they're, they're so so nice in person. They're like family when they're here. I like that. Um, uh, AG writes in here, Hey, John, we saw you in Wayno the other day. Oh, but my husband Chase chickened out saying hi. What, Chase? What are you doing, man? Thanks for the tip on the cream brulee donuts and Akihabara. Oh, those are so good. Next time, say hi. Don't don't be even when I'm live streaming, and you see me, um, just say hi. It's kind of fun, and even for the other viewers, you don't know what's gonna happen. And it's okay to break my train of thought because that would, anything can happen in a live stream, and that's what makes it fun. Like right now, come I can come out here and say keep it down. That'd be kind of fun. Um, Robert writes in uh, Tokyo Drew. Tokyo Drew. Um, it was nice. He he kind of in enhanced the live stream in Wayno because he gave us somebody else to talk about and Tokyo Drew shared his point of view and that was neat you know it made the it made the stream more memorable for people and that's always a good thing Simon and Martina from Eat Your Kimchi very very nice people I don't like to talk too much about other YouTubers I guess but um, and I don't watch a lot of YouTube believe it or not I'm a creator so I'm always trying to um, research new topics but I do watch my friends and yeah they're nice people you guys know who my friends are. Um, what's Jennifer's secret to keeping so young and energetic? This is Jim Bailey. I don't know, Jim. You're going to have to ask Jennifer. I don't want to give away her secrets, and she wouldn't tell me anyways. I might have asked already, and she wouldn't. She's not, there's some things that Jennifer won't share with me. One of them is what, what keeps her so young and beautiful and energetic. Um, I want to thank Heiner um, for these. Thank you, Heinrich. These are so good. These are called uh, marzipan. Um, they have almond, almond in them, and they're so good. These are from Germany. Danke schön. I've been enjoying. Heinrich gave me a whole box full of chocolate. I gotta say, Heinrich, it was a lot, but I will finish it. Um, Hinosaki Park is wonderful for the cherry blossoms. Oh, you're right. Um, Hinosaki Park. Yeah. Mm, I don't know that one. Now, Peter does not live near me. As a result, um, there's he'd have we'd have to like crash together somewhere, either his place or my place, to do a midnight snack run. He does have a motorbike, but Peter's look. He's a really good friend of mine, but he's also very very busy, and YouTube is just like a hobby for him. He's one of the most he's one of the busiest, um, one of the busiest people with his job narrate voice artist that I've ever met and the guy is so good he's always working um, let's see here a and a commercial I can tell you this though my, my um, Peter 
Peter is now the voice of ANA. So if you fly, if you guys fly ANA, you will hear Peter's voice saying, fasten your seat belts um, in, in case of emergency. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking, guys. If you if you ride ANA, um, I, I believe it's it just started. You're going to hear Peter's voice. It's going to be pretty freaky. Um, I'm going to be flying ANA um, sometime soon. And when I do, it, I'm going to freak out when I hear Peter's voice. Like, I'm probably going to start getting angry and disagree with everything that, that he says. And I'm not going to buckle my seatbelts. But Peter is the voice of ANA, as well as many, 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 many other brands. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Am I allowed to say, Peter, am I allowed to say that? I don't know. ANA, ANA um, Airline. Do they have a channel? Oh, here it is. ANA Global Channel. Maybe we can hear, hear some of his work. Let's see here. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ANA, inspiration of Japan. ANA, inspiration of Japan. That's not Peter. Kono tabi, ANA, Tokyo tema ni. That's not Peter. Um, but if you do come in with with in ANA, he'll be doing the flight. Uh, buckle your seatbelts. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, but he look, he's got his own channel and he's got his own thing. So if you guys miss Jennifer, Peter, or Kevin, check out their channels. Um. And one day we will do another live stream, but I think um, that's one of the reasons I, they're not on it too much, um, scheduling. And also I think for m my friends, a lot of them have come to a point where they have to start to grow their own identities. And um, I guess there's a lot of people would go into Jennifer's stream after watching this one and then talk about me. And the people were talking about her on my streams and like, eh, you know what? We we're happy about that, but I think Jennifer has her own identity and she needs to grow her channel herself. So it's also important for me to give you, viewers of this channel, um, different kinds of um, points of view. And Jennifer and Peter and Kevin's points of view are awesome, but there's also other people and there's also different um, um, opportunities. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Hi Art, you should good. Thank you for this. Next question. I'll take a couple of more. Will you ever make an Only in Japan podcast? Yeah, it's in the works. Mm, that was e these are easy to answer. Okay, speed round. Do you plan to make and sell Only in Japan merch? Yes. Munich is far from here to travel to. Meet up in uh, greetings for Berlin. Oh, I know. People in Berlin and, and uh, Hamburg and Hanover, everybody uh, in, in, not Hanover, in, in, in the north of um, Germany is complaining that I'm doing it in Bavaria. I'll be back to Germany. I would love to meet everybody though. They're not complaining. I just know it's hard. John, what do you, what do you feel about seeing yourself on camera? Um, how do I feel? I I never really watch back what my work, but I don't think about it. When I watched myself speaking Japanese there, I was a little bit embarrassed, but I don't really. I don't think about it too much anymore. Um, you, it, it's, it's, it is good though to look at your work and when I edit the videos, I look at myself over and over and over again that it, it's when I now, when I make the shows, I kind of have an idea of the way I should do it better because I edit the videos a lot myself. I've edited them all myself, but I don't know. So this is not lightning round, it's, it's really getting cold. All right, we're gonna speed this up. Are you prepared for a two-state solution world war? No, I'm not prepared for any war. That's an easy question. Uh, Mount Takao, um, is this a qu question mark? Yes. Is, is, I don't even know if that's a yes, no question. Um, only in Japan. Do you have any recommendations for those learning Japanese? Yes, study hard. Mm, um, move to Japan. Uh, learn katakana and hiragana first. I think learning the alphabet first. Memorize katakana and hiragana and the sounds and the syllables. A, I, U, A, O, kaki, ku, ke, ko. And then um, it will cut the time for you to learn in half because you know the flow of the language. Do not learn Japanese by romaji or Roman letters. You will It will drive yourself crazy and you'll learn. It'll take you four times longer to learn that way. I'm just making up that number, by the way. Could be half. Um, how often do they ID for alcohol? Never. I've never been 
they just ask me if I'm 20 and I say yes, but I look like I'm 40, so yes. Card. Who's asking me that, like a high school kid? Are you scared for the Article 13 EU Copyright Directive? I don't even know what that is. M am I scared? How do I feel? No, I'm not scared. Will you ever do a video in Hiroshima, maybe about the t tram system? Um, Gordon, I've done a lot of videos in Hiroshima, at least at least two or three on the main channel and at least two or three on the on Go, and I'll be back in Hiroshima. I used to live there. I lived there for about two years in a little town called Yokogawa um, about 18 years ago. John, best place to stay in Tokyo for an American expat? Asakusa. 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 Um... I don't, I, I, it's quiet and, and cultural and you'll have a better stay than, and you, if you want to go to Shibuya, you could just go there by Ginza line. No change. This trans, this should transition to Midnight Sacron. It could, it won't. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. I might have missed them. I have a look. All right, Gordon. Oh my God. I have to hear Peter's voice on my flight to Japan in April. You will. If you fly ANA, you will. And, and no, no, no offense to ANA, I prefer JAL. I prefer the colors. I, I like red better than blue. Just saying. Not that there's anything wrong with that. John, are you planning to come to Bhutan? No, but not right now. Uh, are you planning to come to... Uh, wait, have you, I will answer that. have you watched Japanese pro wrestling? I have. Um, let's see here. Will you visit Taiwan in the near future? I almost went through Taipei to go to India for this trip. Instead, I went through Sri Lanka. I should have gone through Taipei. Yes, um, Taiwan is in the is a destination I might go to in 2019. Maybe I think I think I would love to go. I've been to Taiwan twice, by the way. Um, and Sony, uh, hi. If you can say hi to my friend Sheetal. Hey, Sheetal. Yeah, okay. I think you, you brought this up before. Sheetal. Hey, Sheetal. She's traveling back to the USA today. Sheetal, what are you doing? How long have you been here? Why am I using this voice? I feel like I should appeal to Sheetal not to go. Uh, and we love your program. And what's your favorite kanji? Whoa. Whoa, what's your favorite kanji? I don't know. I would say I just love, maybe, because it's, you know, it's love for crying out loud. Um, Sora, I like Sora, which is sky. Um, yeah, I like Sora. Sora is, is it's also a nice name. I have, um, one of my friends, his, he has a daughter who's, whose name is Sora, S-O-R-A in Roman letters. And uh, I, it's kind of a neat name, it means sky. Key is also good, right? The, the kanji for key. Yeah, Sura. That's right. You guys got that. Um, what's your favorite shrine? Shrine. I don't know. Um, um, oh, in Mihonoseki in, in Shimane near Yonago City. It's in Yonago's Totori, but it's also on the border of Shimane Prefecture. This is on the Sea of Japan side. There's a place called um, Miho, Miho Shrine, Miho Jinja. I, I really liked Miho Jinja. And it could be because um, my my Japanese family, so to speak, that I, I I guess did homestays with, they live in Yonago, so I have a big connection to there. But they love Miho Shrine, Miho Miho Jinja. So if you go to Miho Noseki, and you should, if you go to that area, I like I like um, Miho Shrine. It's a fisherman's t village that hasn't changed for hundreds of years, and the shrine is really well preserved in the center of the town, and I like that. It's my favorite shrine. Don't tell anybody, though, because I want to keep this up to myself. I don't want a bunch of tourists to go in there. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you need more 7-Eleven late night snack runs, I might. I might do that. Not tonight. Actually, um, actually, I think for the next one, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get Kanai. I'm trying to get Kanai to go on the snack run uh, next time. All right. If you guys like that idea, click the like button. And if we get like a thousand likes on this live stream, then I can just say, look, a thousand people said they want you to do the midnight snack around Kanai. You got to do it with me. Then she'll do it. She doesn't like to stay up late. So that's what the point is. I know we're never universal peace. We're never gonna get to a thousand, but you know, I think people are gonna watch this later. So just keep keep liking. 
don't, you can't like twice, by the way. You know, someone's going to ask that. Yeah, but UFO bot. Hey, but UFO That's a great idea. 1,000 likes, everyone. Yeah, but you can't like twice. And don't make fake accounts and like it, too, because Google knows this stuff. It's probably watching right now. It's Big Brother watching. YouTube, are you watching? Algorithm, are you watching? If you are, I just told people to do the right thing. Click once. Um, are you planning to do any more hitchhiking trips to Japan in the future? I might. Um, Max, um, I have a project that is seriously delayed just because I, it, I've, I've had so many different challenges with it. And I might do a short hitchhiking trip to try and, and make some buzz for that next year. Um, one of my biggest regrets in life is that project. Um, and I, I'll tell the people who backed it more, but it's, it's, uh, the video is good. It's just one of the biggest challenges I've ever had in my entire life. It was not the actual hitchhiking, but the actual, um, physical making of, of so many DVDs, um, with so much data, with 45 days of data. Uh, it was, it's, yeah. But I think I will do a short hitchhiking trip in 2019 to try and, and psych people up for that um, to be released. But I'll let I'll let you know. But hitchhiking is just fun because you don't know what's going to happen, and it's usually it's it's good stuff that always happens. Will you make videos about places and attractions in Japan known for science and or technology? Yes. Um, Anjum, this is a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, I met a guy named Scott Scotty. And his channel is Strange Parts awesome awesome guy we did one collaborative video and we're going to be doing more in the future i think um so whenever he comes to japan i really want to help him i don't even have to be in the videos but i, I just like him he's just a I, I think what he's doing is such a wonderful idea um and i just want to help him in some way there's there's it was like with what's inside with lincoln and dan i just wanted i didn't even care if i was in the video or not i just wanted them they're just so nice and i wanted them to be able to make a good show and that was um yeah and, and then they came back and did the square watermelon this summer like literally i said hey guys we got square watermelons and they flew from america to come here for just like one night to cut open the watermelon that that's what friendship is man um so i yeah i love those guys and i i, I do hope um i, I do hope I, I can see them again soon because they're just they're, it's just one of the nicest families can we still buy the Hitchhiking DVD? They will be on sale next year for sure. Um, it's yeah, it's they'll, they'll be on sale for next year. I'm I'm making like a thousand of them, okay? So every, everyone will get a chance to buy one. Have you read about 5G tests that will happen? Yeah, um, I'm I'm very on up to date with the technology of um, what the cell phones, uh, what's happening because we do live streaming using 4G LTE. And, um, I, you know, I upgraded to, um, where is that phone? I upgraded to the um, iPhone XS, and this has been a big, big mistake. The iPhone XS, where is it? Hold on a second, guy. I can't even find it. But the iPhone XS, um, it's, it's a beautiful phone, but my problem with it is that it, it um, it has an internal stabilizer, okay? And the internal stabilizer, uh, when you use it with a gimbal, it counters the internal stabilizer, so it looks like you're walking like this. And it goes like this when you walk, because it, you have to turn the internal stabilizer off, and the iPhone doesn't let you turn off the internal stabilization. It creates really awful video. So uh, um, I've had some problems with the XS. It has stronger stabilization, so it, when I'm using it with live streaming sometimes, it, it's awful video. It's smooth, but it's it's like you're on a boat. Um, this The iPhone 7 Plus is much, much better than the new phone that I bought, and I regret buying the iPhone XS. Um, but it's still a good phone. It's just it's not good for live streaming because of that. Um, you use the magnet trick. Nosh, I saw that too. But look, you know, whenever you get into having to do 10 steps in order to live stream, it just takes the fun out of it. This is something I talked with Peter um, a long time ago. If I got to put magnets, and I have a wide angle lens here, I have a counterbalance. If I have to also like magnets and do, it kind of take, the spontaneity of it is the attraction to me 
as someone who makes does this kind of stuff. And by the way, nice to see you again, Nosh. Nice to see you here. <laughs> like Ramsalyn's taking taking care of some of some of the uh, comments, which is cool. But I don't know. I like to keep it real simple. You also um, introduced me to another gimbal. Nosh um, helps me out with. He he's very much in touch with a lot of the technology, um, the new stuff, and uh, I got my eye. I got my other eye on on it too. So it's I got it all, I'm all over the place. So we'll we'll I'll I'll, I'll figure it out. I do want to I do want to wait. I use what's called an Olo clip for this lens here. This Olo clip. It's not bad. It's not. It's the image is not that clear. Because sometimes dust will get into it. It's it's not an expensive lens by any means, but the Olo clip is probably the best um, affordable solution. That's not too heavy. That's another weight is also a problem. But the problem is the Olo clip does not have, or the Olo lens, or I don't know what it's called, does not have one for the iPhone 10s because the 10s has a bigger, a, a more protruding lens. So I can't attach the 10 wide lens to the new phone that I have because they haven't released it yet so I cannot recommend their lens um, an episode on on cycling um, I, I, yeah. if it does happen it'll just happen cycling is something I was, I've been thinking about doing doing something as soon as I can I, I release um, finish the, up this project um, to do something like that where I go off for like four or five days and just live stream somewhere um, but do it on this channel and not on the main channel so I'll be doing something like that what is your favorite city in Japan and why Ryan wow Ryan these are big these are broad questions you want me to paint with like a roller paintbrush and not one of these fine precision ones that's a tough one um, favorite city is Hiroshima why I lived there for two years food is awesome people were friendly beautiful sea there um, I just like the vibe. Everything was close together. If I needed electronics, if I needed shops, there's one street, Hondori, which had everything. For me, it was perfect. Miyajima nearby. Um, a little bit cheaper. Rent was cheaper. John did biking on the island recently. Yeah, I was on um, uh, Ogasawara. There's another video on that coming maybe before I leave for the U.S. What is your favorite city in Japan? Let's see here. Come on, guys. You got some better questions. What's your favorite type of noodle? Soba. No, 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 no. Udon, udon, udon. I take it back. Udon. What's your favorite spot in Tokyo? Um, Amiyoko. That just came out. Amiyoko, I guess. Did you plan on raising a family in Japan? No. Um, which places do you recommend to go in? Do you plan? Yes. Did I, did I plan? No. It just sort of... I didn't, I didn't plan to be here for 20 years, uh, Liam. William, which places do you recommend to go to in Shibuya? I don't recommend going to Shibuya at all. It's just too crowded. This is a guy from who's been living for 20 years. I avoid Shibuya. But if I had to go, I would say um, Shibuya Station is being renovated. I, I kind of definitely want to go there. There's also um, across the street from Shibuya Station behind Hachiko, uh, underneath the Yamanote line, there's a little area. Oh, gosh, I, can't, I forget the name of it. But there's a little area that has these little teeny restaurants, and I don't know how long, how much longer they're going to be there. Because um, I have to be honest with you, the um, um, situation in, in Shibuya is always changing. All right, you don't know because there's so much construction going on for 2020. Locations are being torn down all the time. Um, let's see, what is this? This so here's Shibuya Station. I know just looking at it, it's it's hard. Here's Hachiko. Here's Hachiko Scramble. And then it's, here's the tracks, and it's right here, all right? It's right here. It's called Shibuya Nonbe Yokocho. Now, Nonbe Yokocho, Yokocho is always like an alley. And this alley has lots of little bars. And there's one called Kinoko that I did for NHK like 10 years ago. I did, I was in NHK, and I did this bar called Kinoko. Where it, it's, I know it's still here. The owner was so friendly. I think they can speak a little bit of Japanese, a little bit of English. It was expensive though. It was it was about forty five, fifty dollars a person with alcohol. But if you want to have like a really Japanese experience, you want to go maybe to Nombe Yokocho. It's still kind of oh, was it Nagomi? No, 
I don't think it was Nagomi. I think it was closer to the center. It might have gone out of business. I don't know. But it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was called Kinoko, which means mushroom in Japanese. Which means mushroom. good place okay, I recommend that all right one or two more questions this is great um, thank you for the answer you're very welcome do you dream in Japanese or English whoa um, I started dreaming in Japanese about about three years after I was living here and I didn't even know what they were saying I just kept dreaming it um, I dream in both I dream in both and when, when Kanai speaks to me, she's speaking in Japanese. But she always speaks in Japanese to me. We speak Japanese like 85% of the time. And recently, she she tries to speak English, and then she, and then, and then I speak Japanese, and then it becomes a match of wills. Who will break first? Is my Japanese better than her English, where she just gives up, or is her her English better than, good enough that I will just give up, and she always gives up, and and she relents, and we just continue in Japanese. Not that that's any better. Um, any tips for traveling in Japan in December? That's a good question. That's a legitimate question because it came with the super chat. <laughs> so I could see it real clear. Um, this is from Coolfire719. Thank you. Uh, tips for traveling in December. Um, I'm going to say go back and look at the episodes I made on um, at this in January uh, a year ago. This one's called Japanese Zen's and Kaiseki Cuisine. This one's called Japanese Onsen Bath Experience. Um, and there's a 360 video. Watch these two. And in December, it's a great, it's the perfect time to go to a Japanese onsen. It's the perfect time to go to a Japanese ryokan and spend some time inside because ryokans themselves are almost like museums because um, we have hotels in the United States and in, in the West. Um, they're 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 nice inside, you know, five star hotel. They're very nice inside, but they're very Western too. They're not, they're, they're our culture. When you go to a yokan, it's Japan's culture, man. And when you, it's cold outside and the days are shorter and you're going to be inside more, you want to be inside of a yokan. So I think you should pl at least plan, depending on your budget, at least two nights in a yokan at a at a nice onsen. Um, the question should be, which no one asks, is like, which onsen should I visit? Never mind Kagoshima or Aomori. Which onsen should you visit? Which area has the best ryokan and onsen? You should be asking that. But since you didn't ask, I'm, I'm asking myself. I'm not going to count that as a question. You guys have to answer, ask that. Um, does it snow in Tokyo? Mm -hmm. And it, it's like Anjum is asking all these quite really good questions. Um, not I'm, I don't think it's ever snowed during, during Christmas. Last year I wasn't here. I, I'm not always here for Christmas, but usually we'll snow once or twice, and it always melts the next day. Like, almost always. Almost always. Um, JD writes in, I really enjoyed the Nebuta Museum in Aomori. Good. Any chance that you'll be revisiting the area for content soon? Um, I was in talks with... Uh, hey, Sascha is here. Greetings from Ireland. Hey! I, you know, I wish... I almost flew through Ireland to go back to New York for Christmas, but we found Icelandic air. But we were this close from from flying through Dublin, which would have been awesome because then we would have done a couple days there and then we could have uh, hung out in Ireland. But um, thank you for that. Um, wait, what was I talking about again? <laughs> oh, 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 it was um, the, the question. Um, let's see here. Have you visited the Instant Ramen Museum before? Yes, I have. Twice. Do you like Dr. Slump Manga? Um, that's from um, Shueisha's um, uh, Shonen Jump. And yeah, I don't not like it, but I, I, don't, I don't read it very often. I think I've read it twice, to be honest with you. But I, I do not not like it. I like it. But I don't follow it. What time do you go to Germany? Um, Philip, uh, I'll be on Marionplatz with Kanai on December 17th at night. Um, we're staying in a hotel in the area and we're gonna be going there for the market. And on Facebook, I will be putting event pages for all of our meetups and I would love to meet as many people as possible. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Which onsen is great in Sapporo? 
I don't think Sapporo, Sapporo has some onsen, but there's none when, you don't go to an onsen in the city. Um, you can, uh, Leo's World, but when you go to an onsen, the onsen is the attraction. There's, you can't have, it's very rare to find the best of both worlds. A really good yokan onsen inside of a city is like, that's like the dream, man, but it doesn't really exist. The best place is, um, Heinrich from Germany went up to, um, Suiso Onsen, which is in this, in this, um, which, which one video? Maybe it's in the Onsen bath video. He went up there. He went up to uh, Sansui Onsen. Let me see if I can find a clip from there. One of the most beautiful, ah, uh, here it is, here it is. Tsuchiyu Onsen, a scenic onsen town that is just perfect when the snow is falling. This is in Fukushima. Surprise! It's one of the most beautiful places for onsen in Japan. And it's far away from that other stuff. Look at how clear the Hotel water San Suizo is. is located right next to the scenic Heinrich stayed here. Spring waterfall. And he said he had a pretty good experience. And you get an amazing view of it from the bath. Although the water is a little hotter than what I'm used to, the bath has one of the most relaxing views. So I would say, you know, Sapporo doesn't really have onsen culture. I, I mean, they do. They have a bath culture, but it's not really, um, I don't know. You want to stay in a yokan, and an onsen town is the attraction, not the city. That's my advice to you. Nezumi 66, five pounds. Oh, that's your question? Actually, if you turn the pound sound, you could get kind of a question thing. Thank you. Thank you for that, Nezumi. I appreciate it very much. John, if you're going towards Munich, try, visit Salzburg and Innsbruck too. Really amazing. Ah, oh, so Difference Engine wants me to go to Austria. I've been to Salzburg and Innsbruck um, a couple of times before. Vienna many times. I'd say like a dozen times I've been to Vienna. Um, I had friends in a, in a town called Graz and Graz. And uh, he moved now to a different different country. Um, he's Austrian, so I would go and visit my friend in Graz. Uh, so I've been to Austria many times. I've been through Austria too to go to Budapest and to Hungary and, and visit my friends in Romania. I had a lot of friends in Cluj Napoca in Romania. Um, but I'd love to go to Salzburg and Innsbruck. Um, one of the reasons we're going to Munich is because it was just convenient to fly from India um, through to, uh, through to Munich. It just worked out that way. Berlin was a little bit harder. And um, Munich has Marienplatz, which has a really nice Christmas market. But I'm, I'm kind of going to see the Christmas markets. So if you guys know any if you know any good Christmas markets around Munich that could be day trips, we could do that on the 18th, and that would be pretty cool to go. Um, maybe Nuremberg up north is good, or Salzburg is, is a possibility, as well as even um, down in the south. Uh, uh, there's some places in Switzerland. Basil, burn, I don't know. We're looking at it. Um, let's see here. By the way, he cl definitely click the like button because I said if we get a thousand likes on this, then Kanai will will do a midnight run with me. She said. Well, I said I said that. I I can't say she said that. Anything you recommend to do in Shinagawa? Um, I don't. You know what? There is a really cool uh, Nikon. Uh, camera museum that a lot of people will miss if you ever had a Nikon camera this museum probably has it inside there and it's free and it's really cool if you like cameras and I was fascinated because Nikon had one of the first cameras ever um, and just some of the crazy lenses that they made over the years were in there to me I was fascinated by that and that's it that's right next to Shinagawa station um, Shinagawa is a is mixed feelings for me because that's where immigrations is to renew your visa and it's always yeah not a happy place Shinagawa to me means immigration and immigration is like uh, a boring building where people don't look happy you know any um, off-leash dog parks in Sumida um, if you go along the Sumida River there are actually on the banks you'll find several dog places where you can release your dog and they're open, the hours might be inconvenient sometimes. I, I think they close early, maybe 8 p.m. But I've seen, when I run, I run along the Sumida River now. Um, I, I see a lot of these little dog with AstroTurf in there and dogs can run. 
um, off leash. Um, it, it's kind of gated off, but they're on the riverbank where there's more more open space for this kind of stuff. They're longer, of course, than, than they are wider. I said I was going to do one more question 15 minutes ago. This is crazy. Do you recommend doing Tokyo in December? Yeah. There's, there's four seasons. There's no bad time to do it. There's, there really is no bad time to visit Japan. Four seasons. Each season has its own unique cuisine, has, their, has its own unique aspect to it. So you probably have to visit Japan at least four times to get the full effect or just stay for 20 years and then you, you get it. Sapporo versus Kirin versus Asahi. Go. Um, right now, I like Sapporo Red Label. Sapporo, sorry, Sapporo with the red star in it is my favorite. So there you go. But I'll, I'll go for Asahi right now. But I used to drink Kirin um, all the time 20 years ago. John, here is a little help for you guys' next food run. Hey, thank you. Please get something awesome. Thanks, Kat. And when we do the, when we do the food run, um, you'll know that the first thing I get will be dedicated to Kat, okay? I, I'm gonna do another, I guess I'll do another food run. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be a midnight food run, but I'll, I could do it, an afternoon food run sometime um, this week. I, I'm thinking of some locations to, and seeing if somebody, another YouTuber will, will come with me to, to come and eat. Um, you know, Matthias helped me at the, the meet. Oh, there's a big festival. I can't, I can't tell you yet because I don't want other YouTubers to go there, but there's a big festival, a food festival I'm going to um, later this week, I think. So stay tuned. I think it'll be in a couple of days. But you will see the live stream there. I'll be one of the first people. So, Kat, we're going to put, put it to good use in a few days, okay? Uh, that's going to be fun. Go collab with Ramen Adventure. Uh, I've seen some of his episodes, actually. When I was researching things on Ramen, his stuff always comes up. I don't know why his channel doesn't grow bigger, because I can't think of anybody more more knowledgeable about the topic than that. I guess YouTube is a, is a weird place. We discover so many awesome channels or so many awesome creators that don't break out, and I can't really explain why. And that makes me wonder, like, how did my channel grow so much? And the only thing I can think of is when you make, um, when I make content, I make content that I think I would like, like people to watch more than once. And I want to tell a story that brings people in to it or feel something. And when I edit it, I know, I know, an atmosphere. I know if I, if, I know if I've done it or not. If you show beautiful images and you narrate something that just sort of floats off the tongue and can give you feeling with sounds. What makes the Fukushima Onsen experience so amazing? It makes this bad. It's sitting and soaking for 10 But I, I kind of want to give you a feeling or challenge your senses or introduce something to you, and that's why, um, that's why I make the show. And now I do it for, you know, to live as a career, but um, those, are the, those will always be the factors in why I do this. So I'll never, it'll never get old, and I'll never run out of ideas. Any favorite tea? Um, your, uh, love your videos. Thank you. Any favorite tea? This is from Kay. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, I've been drinking a lot of um, Uji Matcha from Kyoto, and it's just because that's what Kanai has. Um, I like, um, wow. The royal milk tea is what uh, Mr. Seichi liked, and, um, wow. Um, Hochi... Uh, what's it? Um, the 16 Judokcha. Um, Hoshin Bicha. I forget. I guess. It, I don't know why. It's just Maybe it's because it's like 1 in the morning, but I forget. There's a lot of really good teas. And in fact, Japan has so many teas. Not like China, but there's so many teas out there. It's like, it can just blow you away. Nosh is donating. Gosh, Nosh. I don't know. Thank you. I, I cannot say thank you enough for Nosh. Nosh, I should be donating to you, brother. <laughs> I should be donating to you. Um, let's see here. Manny writes in here, you, Charlotte, Chris, Rachel, and June are some of the biggest. Um, look, I'm going to say something about Rachel and June. I'm going to say something. June is, he might be one of my favorite YouTubers. That June's Kitchen, what he does with that is just incredible. And I've, Jun's kitchen is, I can see so much of Japan. Um, 
I, and I, I, I'm not going to talk about other YouTubers' channels ever. Not really. I don't want to do too much of this. But I want to tell you something about Jun's Kitchen. And it's, this is something that I learned about um, Vermeer. And I'm comparing Vermeer, the artist, to Jun's Kitchen. Because right now I'm making a video about Vermeer. Let me see if I can get this here. Um, is, there, is there a title sequence I can show you? Oh, this thing. Okay. So right now I'm doing I'm doing a video on Vermeer. You can see um, this is Professor Fukuoka. So let me tell you something about what I learned watching Jun's Kitchen and what I learned about Vermeer. I, I wanted to know why Vermeer, this artist, was so popular in Japan. All right, he's a Dutch artist. This is considered the Mona Lisa of the North of Northern Europe. And when I watch Jun's Kitchen, I see no ego in his work. That means he doesn't really put, he, I mean, he's in his work, but his work is very much like Vermeer. He doesn't put his ego into his work. He doesn't um, project himself into it. You don't see his face. It's very, mm, it's very ne neutral, and I like that. It draws people in, especially, and especially for Japanese. That's a Japanese way. It's very humble. It's very, yeah, uh, Liz is writing in. Jun's Kitchen is very humble. It's very simple. It's so successful in the storytelling through food. I cannot say enough. When I watch it, I'm just in awe because of how simple, how beautiful, and how much like what I've been learning about Vermeer, Jun's Kitchen is like. And in that sense, and there's no ego in it, right? I like that. And uh, that's why Jun, you know, and when I, I didn't, I only met him once, and when I, maybe twice. And when I met him, it's like, it's like talking to a genius. <laughs> that, that's, you're in the presence of greatness you know, with, with Jun. But I, I don't, I don't want to talk about people too much. But I guess if you have good stuff to say about them, then it doesn't hurt. Um, but I can't, I cannot, I can't say enough nice things about the work that goes into each one of his episodes and the lack of ego and keeping it simple that he puts into it is such a trait here in Japan that I learn about not being Japanese by watching his show, which he shows to people who are not Japanese. That I thought was pretty ironic and funny because I don't think his target is exactly just Japanese, um, but most of his audience is probably non-Japanese, but he has so many Japanese traits in the show that for me, I can, I'm learning back from him the things that I've learned about Japan over the last 20 years, and it is incredible all of the stuff. You, if you don't know Japan and by living here, you'll miss a lot of the stuff in Jun's kitchen. Um, and maybe you won't. I don't know. Maybe you won't. Mindless Marty, buy yourself some beer. Um, I, gosh, I wish I had one in the refrigerator to drink. It's been 90 minutes. I can't, I can't stop. I hope we can meet again before I leave in December. That'd be great. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much. It's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm almost tempted to go to the convenience store, but I got. I have so much stuff to do. Um, let, let's put let's put a ribbon on this and end it. I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, definitely click the like button if you're if you're still watching this. Give yourself a hand, a round of applause. That's impressive. Uh, I don't know if anyone can watch this for 90 minutes, but if you have reached in the playback at this point, give yourself a round of applause um, because that's you just marathoned yourself into history. Because who watches 90 minutes of a, of a live stream? I don't know. I, I do hope that, that there is some useful information here and that you guys learned something from this. And we'll do more of these. The re only reason I'm doing this is because it was, it's been raining today and I couldn't do anything uh, live stream tonight. And I think this is pretty good where you can just ask me questions. I do this with, with everyone on Patreon twice a month, by the way. Hint, hint. These postcards are still available from Alga, from um, Olga Sawara on the Patreon postcard club. And Ramsalint puts it in. Wonderful. Look at that. Um... All right, last, last question. This is it now. Whoa, and Sony, that's a good question. How do you spend your weekend with Kanai? How do I answer this without um, giving you clues on what we're doing together? Because sometimes I just want to, I just don't want to do anything except just hang out together, you know? It's a good question. Um, so, Kanai likes... And I likes, um, we like to go to, like, she likes to go out to eat, of course.
course. This is Japan. Everybody does. But we go out to restaurants um, for dinner and to go on dates. I, I think I should do more of those. And um, yeah, I like to take, we like to take walks to go around the neighborhood at night. Um, but we live in the center now, so it's kind of neat. We can just go out and get ramen or do something, but to get out of the house and to go out. Um, yeah, Odaiba is, is not too far away, and I, I really like Odaiba, but there's, you know, Toyosu is a nice place. They have a little beach there. Not a beach, but you can watch the boats go by. Um, Shinagawa, the, some of the places um, in Tena, Ten, Teno, Teno's Isle is nice and uh, on the water. Um, restaurants. Um, she loves cafes. I try to do stuff that she likes to do. She wants to go see this movie. Um, I guess it's the Freddie Mercury movie that's just uh, um, started in Japan, so we might go, see, might go see that. But yeah, we try to do, you know, dates and stuff. Um, I try to, to take her out to like hotel breakfasts. I like to go to the different hotels and try the breakfasts sometimes. And it's just like, we, we cook a lot, but when we go out, it's like, you want to try something nice. And the one thing that I think, um, I totally, I totally agree on with, um, my friend Simon and Martina is that when you go out and you eat and when you go out eating, look, you should spend your money on certain things, but people sometimes don't spend enough money on the f on eating. And when we go out, we like to spend money on eating good food. I think food is something that um, you can't take it with you, but it's an experience. And uh, you know, I I don't like to skimp too much on food. I will pay a little bit more for good food, and I'll skimp on haircuts <laughs> and buying clothing and shoes. I can skimp on these things, but I can't skimp on food. Food is 90% of the budget as Max appropriately writes in. Um, that was a great question. What do, what do we do for dates? And that might be an episode. I think I think that is, is a great episode idea because, um, yeah. And, and by the way, guys, I'm happy that you've been really kind um, to Kanai and encouraged her being on the show. I think she's starting to grow and, and like being a part of the live stream. So thank you for that. Um, oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's it. Yeah, this is from Edwina. Thank you, Bohemian Rhapsody. Thank you for that. Um, favorite convenience store. I, uh, favorite convenience store. Oh, my gosh. 7-Eleven. Right now, 7-Eleven. It could change. Thank you. Um, I'm going to bed, but I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for, for being part of this channel. And, uh, um, yeah, this is fun. Let's do some more of this. You can leave a comment in the comments below, and I usually try to go and look at it um, probably tomorrow morning, and I might answer the good ones. And if you leave it the best comment, I will pin to the top, and you'll become famous with other commenters, which could be, which could could potentially give you like maybe someone will like your comment 25 times. So ask good questions. Um, will you do a Christmas episode on KFC Turkey? Cat, I won't be here for Christmas. I'm gonna be in the United States. And I'm gonna do a Christmas episode underneath the Christmas tree with my Christmas family. So that'll be fun. So everybody, good night. Have a good day, good night, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oka P is right there. Ellis. Ellis, you can't you can't give me a super chat when I'm saying good night, Ellis. Happy there's dry one. Have a good night. Thank you, Ellis. I'll see you in New York, buddy. Thanks, guys.